The last time, we look at how temperature came to be. The work of Galileo was discussed extensively. Followed by Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit invention on mercury, and the alcohol thermometer. William Thomson invention on infrared measurement, was also look at. Finally, we look at Seebeck discovery on thermocouple effects. If you want to learn more, kindly check our previous unit. Now that we have known some little bit of history, let's look at what temperature sensor is all about. Temperature change are measured using thermocouple, thermistor, semiconductor IC, and resistance temperature detector also known as RTD. Temperature measuring device are divided into two parts. Namely sensor, also known as transducer, and the transmitter. So what is temperature sensor? Temperature sensor or transducer convert is an electronic device that convert process variable, which is matter to electric signals. In this case, we are dealing with temperature. But the signal converted may not be within an accepted range that the PLC will understand. This is where transmitter comes into play. This electrical device convert the signal to an accepted electrical signals of 4 to 20 milliamperes, 0 to 5 volts and 0 to 10 volts respectively. The temperature sensor measures the temperature of an object either by coming into contact with the object, or by remotely detecting infrared energy. Let's start by looking at thermocouple. A thermocouple is a device that is used to measure temperature change. It comprises of two dissimilar metallic wires that are joined together to form a junction. When the junction is heated or cooled, a small voltage is generated in the electrical circuit of the thermocouple. This electrical value can be measured. The generated voltage corresponds to the varying temperature of the thermocouple. Thermocouple comes in different temperature ranges. This range are tag by letter. This tag indicates their ranges. The most common type is the type K, which is nickel chromium or nickel aluminium. This tag type can measure as low as minus 200 degrees and as high as 1260 degrees. Now let's look at how it works. When a metal are heated up, the heat excites the atom that forms the metals. The excitation taken place is as a result of the applied heat. And as such there will be vibrations. But this vibration is so small that it cannot be noticed. This excitation will cause electron movements. The free electron within the metals will move from the hot end to the cold end of the material. This movement is what is known as temperature gradients. Because there is in rush of electron from the hot end to cold end. The electron at this end will be negatively charged while the electrons at the hot end will be positively charged. The voltmeter can now be used to measure the volts generated within. One thing worth noting, when the two thermocouple materials are made of the same metal compositions, and when the junction are heated up, there will be temperature gradients. But the moved electron will build up at equal amount across the two conductor cables. And the measuring device value will be zero. However when different material are used, that is when the first material are made up of aluminium, and the second material is made up of copper. The electron buildup will not be equal and there will be a reading on the multimeter. Thermistors Thermistors are made of semiconductor materials, meaning they have greater resistance than conducting materials. But lower resistance than insulating materials. 
this means, at certain temperature. It will behave as conductor and at another temperature it behave as insulator. The relationship between a thermistor's temperature and its resistance is highly dependent upon the materials from which it's composed. The manufacturer typically determines this property with a high degree of accuracy. As the temperature increases, the resistance of NTC thermistor will decrease thereby allowing the flow of current. On the other hand, in PTC thermistor, as temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor will also increase in the same vein. The increase in resistance will prevent the flow of current. In summary, NTC thermistor does not conduct a by default unless it is exposed to heat. While PTC thermistor conduct a by default, but it only stops conducting when exposed to heat. Thermistors are also available with glass coatings for use at higher temperatures. Typically minus 50 to 300 degrees Celsius. These coatings protect the thermistor and its connecting wires from humidity, corrosion and mechanical stress. Semiconductor Temperature Sensor a semiconductor temperature sensor works with dual integrated circuits also known as IC. They contain two similar diodes with temperature sensitive voltage and current characteristics to measure the temperature changes effectively. However, this IC give a linear output but are less accurate. At 1 degree Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. They also exhibit the slowest responsiveness. That is 5 seconds to 60 seconds. An RTD is also known as resistance temperature detector. It is a sensor whose resistance changes as its temperature changes. The resistance increases as the temperature of the sensor increases. The resistance versus temperature relationship is well known and is repeatable over time. So if the resistance can be measured, then the temperature can be measured as well. Resistance temperature detector are known to be a passive device. Which means it does not produce an output on its own. Instead, External electronic devices are used to measure the resistance of the sensor by passing a small electrical current through the sensor to generate a voltage. Typically 1 mA or 5 mA at maximum without the risk of self-heating. Because passing a lot of current to the resistance temperature detector could lead to power dissipation and such the resistance temperature detector heat up. Resistance temperature detector comes in three configurations, which are two-wire configuration, three-wire configurations and four-wire configurations. Two-wire resistance temperature detector can be prone to measurements error, which is because the connecting wire between the sensoring device and terminating point which is usually the PLC modules has its own resistance. This give room for error. Three wire and four wire resistance temperature detector were developed to solve this problems. An example of the most commonly found resistance temperature detector is PT100. A PT100 sensor is the most common type of resistance temperature detector used by vendors in many industries, which are in pasteurization machine in process system for measuring heating and cooling etc. The main reason for their use is due to their stability and accuracy. They are superior measuring instruments that provide confidence in terms of repeatability. Which mean, we will be assured that we will get the same results for each temperature readout. PT100 are made of nickel, copper and platinum. But platinum properties makes it ideal for temperature measurement because of linearity in temperature and resistance ratio. And as such, most PT100 are made up of platinum. In summary, at zero degree, 
P T 100 ohmic resistance is 100 ohm. However at 100 degrees, the P T 100 ohm resistance is 138 ohms. Let look at P T 100 constructions. In P T 100, the platinum wire is wound around non-conductive material. The wound assemblies is inserted in a sheath. This sheath serves as protective medium. The sheath is further placed in a protective casing also known as thermo wells. As we all know, voltage is as a result of current and resistance combination. That is, when current is held constant, and the temperature changes. The resistance of the material also change accordingly. Then, the voltage can be measured. This measured voltage can be used to determine the temperature applied to PT100. Let also look at this equation. At minimum temperature, the resistance is 100 ohms. At maximum temperature, the resistance of the sensor is 139 ohms. Now alpha will equal our maximum temperature which is 139 ohms, minus our minimum temperature which is 100 ohms. All over the minimum temperature which 100 multiply by 100. The resultant combination of this mathematical expression equal 0 0.00391 degrees. Now that we have known our alpha temperature, we will now be able to calculate the resistance of sensor at 65 degrees. The minimum temperature multiply by summation 1 and alpha temperature multiply by 65 degrees. Our resistance at 65 degrees will be equal to 125.4 ohms. That is it on temperature measurement. Hope you have learned a lot today. See you in our next series.